Hey you, are you looking for that venomous lizard guide right here? This little boy, are you trying to figure out what skills, attributes and hero pairings you want for this pet? Guess what, I have got you covered and today is the final wall pet guide in the entire series we've been doing so far and all of these videos are going to be jam packed in a playlist which should be hopefully above right on screen. Now if you want to click it and it should take you to all of the wall pets that we've done in this style of videos. So today we're going to cover those skills, attributes and hero pairs to make your venomous lizard the absolute war pet of choice for most of your marches. Hello, yes, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneaker, an official Cold Dragons content creator. And guess what? We're going over the final war pet. This guy right above me, the venomous lizard, the final war pet that we have in the game currently until they introduce more so hopefully all of these guys are going to stay up to date until maybe they add future maybe pet skills to the rosters which might be interesting right for a little meta shake up if you want to call it in the war pets so let's go over the venomous lizard because this war pet here honestly you can see i've already started building it and this is kind of the way you want to build it too for your marches. So let's go over what you want for this war pet to make it effective and how you know you can get it. So you gotta remember the venomous lizard has a very powerful ability. This is called infection. You can only capture this when you are obviously trying to get those pets. Try and get a one star one if you can before you work on it because it does give you about a figure 16 damage increase so you have you know a damage factor of 16 instead which is a really good uh, base value to work from with everything what we are going to try and do with this pet right so as you can read this the attack range is very far which is relevant because it means that no matter what range hits you you should be able to give that effect back which is a 12% chance to inflict a poison on the attacker when your legions hit by a normal attack this is amazing because it means when you're doing this this can be dealt on anyone and honestly it can and this is a very powerful pet again because of the flexibility right so you can be doing this and as it says triggers every one second so when you are out on the open field and someone targets you guess what you're gonna see this number which is like 260 260 260 and that is the infection damage already being dealt to that unit so if you're not even focusing them you are already in a massive amount of damage to them from the infection triggers right so what else can we do um, with this pet you're probably wondering and we're going to go over them because we've got the skills that you kind of want to start out with here and then i'm going to go over the next four slots afterwards but with this you can see here kind of a complete pet on what you want so you want really high agility for your attribute as well as if you can a very high strength factor and the reason why is because you kind of get forceful infection and this allows you to give you you know that extra damage dealt so you're going to scale really hard off agility and then with the strength you can try and um, basically amplify it even further so that is the way you want to go with that right but now what you want as you can see for me is counter strike and wild counter strike you have to go for this this is just a match made in heaven because it double up on the ability you're already doing so when your legion is hit with a normal attack you have a 50 percent chance of dealing damage to attacker it's only a damage factor of four but it scales with endurance and there you can see the trinity that we kind of want we want agility endurance and strength as the main ones right I got kind of lucky on this one it's really good stats even with a 19 strength the 2.5 is gonna give it a really good amount of stats to work from when you're looking at actually the damage amplifications right i would prefer obviously the 27 luck up there so maybe we do re-roll it but for a pet with eight slots and these stats it's a really good thing to work from right so the reason why you want those three stats though the agility strength and endurance for your attributes as you can see you have two abilities here which is all already going off your agility which is really good then you've got the strength amplification and the endurance based skill so what can you do from here right because i've got four empty slots and you're probably wondering what what am i thinking right so one you could do and this is a really weird one because this is a physical based damage right 
Tooth and Claw does increase it. So you could slap on a Tooth and Claw on here just to amplify this physical damage as well as this physical damage on top of, you know, the Forceful that does it. And then this does some nice little extra, you know, damage basically on the wild counter strike which is really good so you could do stuff like that which is really really good you could also do some a little bit more protective i'm not gonna lie i have tried i've seen players try the protective build and if you're wondering what i mean by the protective build i'm, I'm trying to see the scale there is heart wall so some people do put heart wall on and when you put heart wall on you do try and put on the skill that does amplify your shielding ability right which is a really cool little aspect where you basically put a shield on and then you amplify your own shielding capabilities for that what you can also get though which i want is um, not super follow-up but we are looking for the other counter strike there is another counter strike you can grab for this build which is a really powerful one um but you can just slap on and you'll be very very happy to go and basically as you can see these are like four slots again could be used for stuff like outbursts of rage or even angry raw um, even poison gland if you really want to bypass enemy hp and even wild agility if you really want to just fill out these slots for a very basic common star pet like you see mine is um, without you know trying it going for a three star or two star build you know it's just really good builds you can go for and the reason why you can do stuff like that is because these four skills just do so much damage together and give you a lot of basically protection because people start seeing how much damage they take off this pet and then they start stop hitting you basically so it's a really good thing but you can go other builds again, you know, if you want to go down the tranquility route, which is about healing and then add stuff on like, you know, your great care to add the healing. You could do stuff like that too. No wrong in, in doing that. You can also, because obviously you're putting tooth and claw on this and I would obviously suggest putting tooth and claw on this fifth slot. And then with these last three, what you could do is also something like fierce attack which is strength based with the forceful att fierce attack, which will fill out the third one for your agility, which is gonna give you again, some extra damage dealt, which is really, really good. And if you really, really wanted to, you could put super fierce attack on just to finish it off. And that gives you an extra trigger chance. And you can do the opposite with chain strike, right? So if you've got um, chain strike on your, your pet here, you could also do the same. This is agility, and a, um, and then the next one is wild agility. So you might not actually do this because actually you're gonna be locked up. So no, let's stick with what I said um, originally because it is a lot better having just strength based um, coming out with this other strength based skill here, right? So. That's what I would do if you're looking at it, and that is all the venomous skills that you kind of want for this pet. If you want it more offensive, do the fierce build. If you want to be a little bit more protective, you can go down the healing route or the heart wall route. It's up to you. And if you want more of just like raw stats, you can do that. You know, you can mitigate a attack. You can go through as well with like interruption and stuff like that. You can do all sorts of stuff, which is really effective because you got to think you are hitting people with your pets very far. So this will trigger quite often. So you kind of stop their pets working, which is kind of funny to do. And there might be something you put on for your very last slot on your pet, you know, because you are going to be hitting numerous players with this pet. So that is the skills. And as you can see, those are the attributes. And that's why we have loved this pet. So what are the hero pairings you're probably wondering? So let's go into them, the heroes. And I did save the last two pets till the end for a reason, because these two pets, honestly, are some of the best pets in the game, because both of them having very far ranges, guess what, or, or very like linear based ranges, means you can use them with everything, guys. It is a very good pet. Um, I love, honestly though, the venomous lizards with the archers. I think the archer player right now and the infantry player does get more benefit out of the venomous lizards. And the reason is, is when you look at like heroes like Nico, which has all this counter attack damage bonus, it basically amplifies up because you're dealing basically counter attack damage through your war pet skills, right? Um, again, your Kanara also has the counter attack damage. So 
really good reasoning why and you can run stuff like Canara and Sindrion and then obviously the Nico with Fragar and that's two different marches that could run two different Venomous Lizard builds and they both got counter attack damage, they've got both really good damage and single target output. So it just showcases the, the ability of how archers can actually use those Venomous Lizards really really well right now. But again, you can use this with anyone. If you really wanted to run it with the Cavalries, you can run it with the Cavs, even with the Mages, if you just want people to just not target you, right? If you want to do that. But in all honesty, I do think the other pets are better, like the, the Sapphire Phaedric, because you are actually dump, dumping out quite a lot of AoE damage. So that's why I don't use it for that. And you see, normally I would put it on one of these um, archers if we're going to be rocking one out on the open field, basically, right? But you can use it with anyone. Honestly, guys, have fun with the Venomous Lizard because if you rock it with these infantry, you're going to be just dealing tons of counter-attack damage with your um, Madeline here and your Nika. And especially if you, even if you've got a Spender and you've got Hosk, Guys, the Hosk with the, the counter-attack crit damage and the extra damage dealt bonus is it's just it's so much, man. So that's it, guys. That is all you're going to need to know for this little green guy here, the Venomous Lizard, which does conclude all of the war pets. So like I said, there is a playlist for all of these guys. You can check out every single war pet that we've gone over. Very similar to like this video where we go over the skills, the attributes, and the key repairs nice and easily and briefly for you. So you can basically understand what you need to go for and what you're looking for if you're trying to build this pet, right? So what we're gonna do basically now in the future, I have got two more war pet videos lined up. Uh, one is the tier list basically maker where I do tell you which war pets I would recommend with what types of units. So if you want an infantry based war pet, which ones would you use? Cavalry, which ones would you use? And archers, mages, vice versa, right? So I've got that video coming out and then I've got a very special one where I am gonna give you the top three War pets, I think you as a player should always be building from the start and then work on some of the other war pets in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed those videos. I hope you've enjoyed this entire series on all the war pet guides. And obviously when more war pets come out, we will be covering them and giving you these guides and adding them to the playlist. So thank you for watching. And this has been season one slash season two of Call of Dragons first war pet patch implementation in the game and i hope you guys have enjoyed this journey with me and with all that smash a like comment and subscribe if you have and learned something today and smash a comment if you want me to maybe cover something else to do with war pits that we haven't done yet on the channel and maybe i might do it uh, but until then stay safe guys stay sneaky and peace out